Yeah, you missed out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I'm happy to answer any questions. John, you played in four of these. What do you take? What lessons did you learn as a player that you can transmit to your young team to help them go through this? I think the biggest thing is that no matter how you ended up the regular season, no matter how you did overall, it really has no impact on you know what you do in the ACC tournament, and you need to address it like a new season. You can't think of it. Uh, you can't even think about Friday or Saturday. It's all about Thursday for us. It is different not knowing who you're going to play yet, but of course we'll be watching and we'll be preparing. Uh, we'll see this game today and then obviously tomorrow. Uh, but that's the biggest thing. You can't assume it's just going to happen. You have to go make it happen. John, obviously all the freshmen have had quite the journey. But talk about Tyrese for a little bit. You know, coming from Australia, you getting him in here a little, you know, kind of at the last minute, a year early. Just talk about his development, if you will. Yeah, it's, uh, he's, he's grown as much as any player we've ever had as a freshman from beginning to end of the season. His, his development has been terrific. I think the job that Jay Lucas has done with them on a daily basis, they have a great routine. And his confidence growing you know, throughout the course of the year is what I'm most proud of because we threw him into the fire. Uh, he absolutely uh, you know, went through some growing pains early on in the year, and he just stuck with it, man. He stuck with it, and now he's become one of the best guards in our league and has a chance to be a really, really special player. John, every coach says they want their team to be playing the best at this time of year. What's it taken to get to this point in the last three weeks? Yeah, it's, it's, taken, uh, it's taken a lot for us. You know, we've gone through, uh, you guys have heard me talk about the ups and downs and the adversity that we've gone through this year. I, I truly don't think you can get to the maximum, the, the, the best potential of your team, though, if you don't go through that stuff. And so for us, do you like to lose? No. Do you like to you know, not play as well? No. But it, it does it does teach you what you can and can't do. And uh, excuse me. But for us, uh, it's that's the reason why we're at that point now. And it's they've been as uh, our our guys have been as consistent as any group in terms of the, the work ethic and the approach. Uh, and we've done it a different way. You know, we've really done it with our with our defense, and we've had to play a little bit differently because of our roster, and that's worked out to help us in a major way, especially in March. You mentioned before that you're not necessarily a patient person. Is this year taking more patience out of you? Than you <laughs> probably. I think it takes perspective, and uh, and and probably poise. You know, and that's for me. I've whether it be playing or coaching, I've. I've prided myself on those things. And um, I don't know if I was patient, we'd be in this spot. You know, you can't, you can't be patient. You can't coach our guys that way. And uh, I don't think anybody would be a Duke if they were patient. And so I hope you guys never say I'm patient. Although this year, I think it, it did require some. John, how reassuring is it for you that all of the things that you talked about when you were going through those tough road losses is paying off right now and uh, you and the staff as well. Yeah, it's it's definitely paying off. And, um, you know, that's where the perspective comes into play. And it's not just, all right, you lose and it's just going to happen. You have to handle those situations the right way. And that's where I look to the different experiences that I've had here as a player and as a coach where you have things happen where you don't want it to. It surprises you. Uh, but the way that you react and respond is what's so important. And I do think some of the toughest losses we've had this year, we've really used them in the right way. And we've used it to come together, not to splinter. We've used it to get tougher, not to make excuses. And um, that's what we'll have to continue to do. It doesn't get any easier. You know, this week it's going to get harder. And um, that's, uh, that's the same approach that we'll have. John, did, you, John, did your confidence change? I mean, you've been confident the whole time we've talked to you, at least with us, about taking this job and your first time through it. But like you said, things didn't go literally, literally linear you know, sure. the whole time. Did you, did, was there points where you kind of second guessed because it was your first go around and you say, no, stay with it and this is going to work out the way I'm doing it? 
I've had, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but I've had a really deep belief, you know, since I got this job that we were going to get there. And I truly knew it wasn't going to be smooth sailing. I knew that. Uh, do you go into a game anticipating to lose? Of, of course not. But my belief hasn't wavered. You know, there's decisions, and I, I hope this never changes for me, but there's always, I always analyze decisions that I can make, uh, uh, strategy that we can do better, but it's not doubt. It's, uh, I've always, it could be in high school, it could be when I was really young, playing the best team. I always felt like my team was supposed to win, and uh, that's how I feel here at Duke as a head coach, and so to answer your question, no, I, I believed in it fully every step of the way, even when you're at, when it's at maybe its lowest point. And uh, so, yeah, that's how I felt. When you talk about the team not splintering, you had a lot of young guys, guys haven't played together before, really. And uh, Jeremy's the only captain. How much of a role, obviously you played a big role in that, but also the, the transfers, Ryan and Jacob, haven't been in situations like these before. They played a big role. Uh, Jake and, and Ryan have been in situations where they have won, haven't won, and you know it's you use those experiences to not want them to happen again. Obviously, our staff we've all had those different experiences. Jeremy being a part of the team that didn't make the NCAA tournament and then is in a Final Four. It's it's as big of a difference as you could have. And uh, I, I give them a ton of credit. I've mentioned that meeting that we had after the Miami game to you all before. That was a pivotal moment for our team. And then I credit the freshmen because, you know, it hasn't been, uh, you know, just our right, game one, they're just overpowering everybody. They've had to uh, deal with experience and figure out what works and what doesn't. I credit their families for, you know, supporting them in the right way and allowing us to coach them and to get them better. And I think that's why you've seen amazing growth, you know, from them throughout the season. And uh, that's, so that's, I kind of, I give all those different things a little bit of credit because it wouldn't happen with just one of them. You need the experience, you need the <coughs> attitudes, but you also need the support from key people and family, uh, from our families. Now, can I follow up on that meeting after the Miami game? Two, two parts. One, how quickly thereafter did you realize or appreciate a change in the team's attitude? Was it immediate? Was it more gradual? And two, what did the fact that they had that meeting sort of tell you about the in locker room accountability and leadership that you have? Right. Uh, Brendan, I noticed it right away. <laughs> I, noticed it, I noticed it the day before the Virginia game, the practice that we had. And guys weren't hanging their heads. There was a, there was a seriousness and there was a, a hunger that I felt that those guys had, whatever they said, it was something really good. And, you know, I think it's just, uh, you can't fake it. I, bet, I guess that's the best way to put it. You, other teams can have meetings and certain teams that even we've had where you meet, but if, you, if it's really from the heart, if it's really, uh, what you feel inside and you, you share with your teammates, then it translates into what we've seen on the court. You know, really we've been a different team since that game. Uh, and, and look, I would be lying to you if part of this wasn't the continuity we've had too. It's the, it's the best stretch we've had of getting to have a set rotation and learning how to play with each other. Uh, but it's really more about the, the attitude and approach that we had from the leaders, uh, Jeremy, Jake, Ryan, and then the rest of the group. You know, kind of over that stretch, winning stretch to end the season, um, especially looking at Notre Dame, NC State, and then Carolina over the weekend, you guys have shown a lot of discipline um, to kind of close out tough games. Is that something you can teach, and kind of how does that play into the ACC tournament and NCAA forward? Well, in March, you have to grind out close games, and we've been prepared. We've been in a lot of close games this year, and you know some of them on which weren't close, where it's a 10-point game, and if you can figure out a way to put it away as opposed to you know, it being a single, uh, it being a two or four point game down the stretch, but uh, we've also learned from those experiences. And we haven't just learned what it's like to be in them, but also how to win them. And so I feel, I feel that's given us a lot of confidence, uh, making free throws in, at the end of the games, and also getting key stops. The Carolina game is a great example, being up three uh, to get one final stop. And so we have to use those. We've 
Literally after every game, we've watched film and learned from each one. And I do think that's translated and uh, where it's given us an older group heading into the postseason. John Ryan spoke about the balance that you guys have to have going into this tournament of you know realizing everything's clean slate. Everybody is 0-0 and everybody's kind of going after a championship. But at the same time, you have to lean on what worked for you guys during the six-game winning streak and you know apply that you know into the way you guys play this week in Greensboro. What's going to be your approach as a coach? You know, telling your players like, hey, let's let's lean on what went right for us here, but at the same time, let's still do it out. Right. It's actually Ryan should maybe address the team because what Ryan said is spot on. Uh, it's zero and zero, but still, we should take the confidence with us and how we've been playing. Uh, you know, look, we're, we're a defensive team, we're a rebounding team, and we've been a team that's taking great care of the ball. We've had great value of the basketball. And if we do those things, I feel it gives us a chance. We still need to execute and we can play better. On offense, we can play better on defense. But that's been our identity, and you can't lose that. And you can't try to do anything different once you get into the postseason. I think that's a key thing. Let's be us. Let's do it uh, hungry together, and good things will happen. John, have you had a chance to talk to Nate? And if there's anything you can share, you know, I'd rather keep that private. But obviously, I'm with him. You know, he's been a close guy for me since I started here. You know, he's I think we were together for about ten years. You know, as a couple years as a player and as a coach. So with him, support him all the way. He's a great coach, but he's even a better person. You know, he's been just a great person in my life, and uh, so I'd rather keep any anything else private, though. John, you mentioned we're a defensive team, and you said you had, I had to believe in this the whole time. Right. You built the team in this image. Why did you, for the first team in this sort of constructing, why did you want it to be this way? Why did you want it to be defensive opposed to rebounding focused? You know, it's, I, I can't tell you, there's, when you're putting a team together, you have a feel and a vision for how the team may play and what we may do. The reality of what makes you successful makes you successful, you find out once you're with them on a daily basis. And so I think that's shifted for us throughout the, the summer and the fall and through the course of this season. But it became very clear to us once we got our team together uh, that we were going to be as big as any team we've had. Uh, I didn't know we'd be the rebounding team. I couldn't tell you in the summer. Also, we start playing games and it's, wow, this is jumps off the page at you. Uh, so then you adjust to it, you adapt to it, you adapt to uh, the way Mark Mitchell has really played as of late. And so then there's some new things you have to do there. There's Filipowski, the improvement that he made. So I think it's an evolution of uh, what you expect, and then you have to adjust to, especially with the young team, how they develop and how they come along. Uh, but I can't tell you this is exactly the way that I thought it would be, but I, I, I do know the belief that we are going to be in a place to be really successful, that never wavered. We've talked all season about how lively affects so many things with his defense. He doesn't block your shot and all that. Saturday, he didn't get to play as much because of the foul right. trouble. Why was the defense still as good? What, what allowed you guys to do that? I think the, the habits that we have in place, Steve, are, uh, they've been really consistent. Uh, everybody understanding. It's been, uh, as much as any team watching film on their own, so knowing a, a game plan, following the scouting report, we've like uh, they they see film all the time where areas we can do better, uh, but we've been really good with that. And so there's not the breakdowns, or there's not just the uh, giving away baskets as much. Now there's still some things we have to clean up, but I credit that, and I credit Ryan Young. He's very different, but the physicality that he brings when he's in uh, is huge. And you know I was going to mention at some point, but. You know, when Derek's out, you still have Mark Mitchell, who cleans up so much. You know, I was disappointed for him. He wasn't all defense or all uh, rookie team. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. And look, I know I'm biased and all that, but the value that he brings, when he's on defense, literally to guard one through five, uh, he's as good as anybody we have off the ball. He protects the rim. Uh, he guards uh, ones, twos, threes, you name it. And so I'm very lucky as a coach, when you put a Derek out there, when you put a Mark out there, they clean up a lot. <laughs> they clean up a lot. And it's, so it's, you know, the, the scheme and the strategy and all that is great. They have a lot of ability to help. 
Uh, and he's had, no question, one of the best five, you know, uh, uh, freshman seasons of anybody this year. He's done a big time job. He's playing his best basketball he's played. But uh, I just, I was disappointed for him. And I don't want to make it a bigger thing than it is. But uh, Mark's been such a key guy for us, and uh, he will be here down the stretch. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you all. Thank you.